In this video tutorial, we will use Adapt Builder to model a waffle slab. I'm going to go ahead and import a DWG file. So I'm going to go to File, Import, DWG. And we'll go ahead and choose the DWG file to import. And upon import, I'm being asked to calibrate the drawings if I want to move them and what plane I want to move them to. So I'll go ahead and click check to calibrate because we do want to calibrate the drawing. We don't need to move the drawing here because it's the first drawing we're entering into this model. We do want to put it on the right plane though so we'll put it on the current plane that will be our active plane and then we'll go ahead and assign a group to the CAD drawing so we'll say level 1 CAD. I'll click OK and we'll import the CAD drawing and the program is now asking me in the upper left in the message bar uh, to enter the start point for the calibration line. So I'll go ahead and turn on my snap tool, snap to endpoint tool, and choose the end of grid line one. And then my second point is the end of grid line two. And then we click the enter button to enter the distance between those two points, and that is 16 feet. So we'll go ahead and click OK, and the program will recalibrate. Now the drawing falls off screen, but we can click the top view button in the bottom quick access toolbar to go ahead and bring that view back. And so now we have a background to work off of. So we'll use a combination of native modeling techniques as well as transforming the polygons in the CAD file to form our model. So first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and, and transform this slab region here, this main slab region. So I'll go ahead and in our model ribbon with the slab, with that polygon selected, in the model ribbon I'll come to our transform tools at the end of the ribbon and I'll click transform to slab. And the program transforms that slab and now we can select that slab if we try and click. We notice that it selects the polygon if we click tab on our keyboard we can cycle through objects until we get to the slab region here. And we can see the program input by default to 8 inch slab region that works for us because our, our edges here are going to be 8 inches where the internal will be 4 inches. And we'll go ahead and accept that and now we'll transform our columns. So I'm going to come up here to the home ribbon and say select by layer. This can also be accessed in the bottom quick access toolbar if we click the caret next to the select by type tool, we have the select by layer. And I'm going to go ahead and select the column layer and click OK. And this will select the polygons on the column layer. And we can come back to the model ribbon and click on transform column. And now we have our walls here. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing. We'll go to the select by type and then select by layer. And then we'll choose our walls. We'll click OK. Now we have one compound wall and one single wall. So the compound wall tool will work for both. So I'll just go ahead and click transform compound walls and the program creates the walls for us. Now this is an opening here so we don't need any slab region over this this area because this is an opening for an elevator shaft. So we'll go ahead and uh, select the slab region and it's very easy to modify the slab region we can just right click and say delete vertices or vertexes and go ahead and delete vertexes along the slab and now we have our slab our main slab with the columns and these walls in it as well we can go to a 3d view to see that very quickly and so you see the cat drawing over lapped with the model elements but you can see the modeled elements so far the columns and walls so now we need to go ahead and model these bays of joists here so I'm gonna model one and then I'll copy it over so let's zoom in here I'm using my scroll wheel to zoom in and I'll go ahead and click on slab region and for this ours our slabs are gonna be four inches here so we'll click on four inches or we'll click we'll put in four inches for the thickness and then we'll go ahead and start to trace this slab outline 
So I can go ahead and just trace the slab outline. I'm just left clicking on, at each endpoint that pops up for snapping. And then once I get to this point, I can click C on my keyboard to close the modeling and we've modeled the four inch slab. So now we have these, these rib beams and or these joists. So we can go ahead and model those one by one as well. And then we'll just copy over. So I'll go ahead and click on beam and I'll go ahead and these are going to be, um, let's see, these are six inches wide and then they're four inches deep. They're actually, it's an actual eight inch section here, but we wanna model the beams underneath the slab so we don't get a double counting of stiffness. So I'm gonna say four inch depth, but then I'm gonna offset four inches so that the beam is just the stem modeled underneath the slab. So with that set, I'll go ahead and click on my snap to midpoint tool and I can snap to midpoint here and draw my first beam. I can then go ahead and select that beam, again, just using my tab button to cycle through the elements here. And then I can go ahead and say, modify duplicate. And then we can just duplicate it down. Snapping on the midpoint of those beam drawing entities. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing. We'll go back to beam and our the settings are already set up. They're, it's using the last used settings. And we can come here and draw our vertical beams here, or joists. And then again, we'll go ahead and modify and duplicate this over. And now we have one bay here. So I'm going to go ahead and now select by type. And I'm going to select the beams. And then I'm going to go ahead and hold my control key while I try and select the slab. It failed to select the slab. I know that because it shows polygon here in my properties grid. If I click tab, it will get to the slab. And now we have the slab and beams here uh, selected. And we can go ahead and duplicate these as well. So I'll click duplicate. And then we'll bring these over. We'll just snap to each column end here. Same thing here, snap to these column ends, and we can go ahead and see our slab is now modeled. We now have our waffle slab modeled. We can see the 3D view, see the joists underneath. We can come out of the 3D view and we can also make a section cut of this building. So I'll come to my home ribbon and here on create section cut. And then we'll just cut through the building here and put up our section cut. And we'll see we have our waffle slab geometry here. So we can go ahead and lastly just turn off our, our, la our CAD layers. So I'll come up here to the visibility into our group library and I'll turn off that CAD group we, we created in the beginning. Click OK, and now we just have our model on screen, and we can come to an isometric view and see it this way. So now we could go ahead and mesh the model, lay out tendons and support lines, and then analyze and design the model. For more information on modeling waffle slabs in Adapt Builder, please visit our help file or www.reza.com.